Don't call jiving Trying to tease me You've never been that far before mm -hmm. I just want some jive talking And some hard rocking so don't go changing that channel anytime soon. Jive talking with you. Oh God, we're getting damn good at that. I'll tell you what, honey, sister, child, we are getting good. What's going on with you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Jive Talking with Shane Diablo. This is episode 39. Can you believe it? It's been so long. We've been doing this and you guys have been around and supporting this thing and and it's the reason why I keep doing what I keep doing all the time is because of you guys. Cheers to that. No name brand beer there. Mm -hmm. mm. Hard day at work. Six mile bike ride. Um, right in the door. Damped myself down with the filthy sweat and the muck and the guck and put the water on the face. I cracked the beer and sang that wonderful uh, theme song for this episode. This isn't the, the nun from that spooky movie. Now, this isn't some kind of a demon from your nightmares or whatever. This is King Diamond, lead singer. And this is the first story we're talking about here, which uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of the hopes that I can see Merciful Fate at some time. Maybe they won't just play big festivals, but they'll kind of do some kind of a tour because I'd like to see that. Uh, I think there's only one guitar player. What's it? Her Herman, whatever his name is. Maybe they'll get into it. King Diamond on Merciful Fate's coming back. This is absolutely not a reunion. They're back at it. King Diamond has once again clarified that Merciful Fate's current comeback shouldn't be viewed as a reunion of the influential Danish heavy metal act. When it was announced in 2019 that Merciful Fate would reform for an unspecified number of concerts throughout Europe during the summer of 2020, it was revealed that the group's lineup for the shows would consist of King on vocals, Hank Sherman, that's the guitar player from the olden timey days, on guitar, uh, Bjorn T. Holm on drums, Mike Weed on guitar, and Joey Vera. He's been in Armored Saint. I know him from Armored Saint, uh, but I didn't know he was in Fate's Warning on the bass guitar. Uh, King discussed Merciful Fate's return this past Sunday, August 21st, immediately following the band's performance at the Psycho Las Vegas Festival. Speaking to Knotfest, Daniel Decay, the 66-year-old singer, said, as transcribed, It's absolutely not a reunion. We picked up where we stopped in 1999. It's the same lineup, except we wanted original Merciful Fate basis Timmy Hansen back on the base, you who got sick with cancer, and we tried, why don't you get the devil, do one of your seance things and, and get that cleared up, if you can do that, if you can't, I'm sorry to hear that, but, and we tried, and he got better, and then he got worse, but eventually dying in 2019, oh, rest in peace, sir, I didn't know that. We actually started looking for a stand-in for Timmy in case he should do full shows. And that was Joey Vera. Timmy wanted, uh, wanted that and was totally into that. I saw Joey with Fate's warning and there was no doubt in my mind. And Timmy really, really felt that was the right thing at some point. Timmy got worse really fast. King continued, When we played at Copenhagen Festival in Copenhagen in early summer, Joey got a chance to meet Timmy's daughter, which was really, really nice, and could get her blessing too for doing what we're doing. Otherwise, it's the Nine album lineup. So that's, oh, the Nine album, is that the 1990? Uh, so that's the only thing that changed is the base. <laughs> King also talked about Merciful Fate's plans for new music, including the song The Jackal of Salzburg. I love that Salzburg steak. Have you ever had that Salzburg steak? Uh, which he and his bandmates have been performing at all of their recent shows. The track is expected to appear on Merciful Fate's upcoming studio album, tentatively due out in 2023 via Metal Blade Records. Lyrically, the song is inspired by one of the last major witch hunts, the 
Zalber Jackal trials in Salzburg, Austria, 19, uh, 1675 to, 9, to 1690. 139 people were executed, including 39 children between 10 and 14 years old. 53 teenagers and a young adults between 15 and 21 as the followers of Wizard Jackal or Magician Jackal or Jackal or Jack A from, uh, from 224. Remember that show? 224, Jack A. Hey, everybody. Uh, who was himself never found? Uh, here's King again. We're writing a full album. We're also writing for a full King Diamond album at the same time. But of course, Merciful Fate, we can't just start with a normal song. I don't know why. It's crazy. But me and Hank are writing the same way we did back then. I will be writing some of my own songs. But we start with out with Hank writing music. And in the old days, I would get it. I would, I would have a big scalpel, and I'd do this making cutting motion, and suddenly things move around in the stuff, and Hank says, Oh, now it sounds like merciful fate, and that's been the case with the Jackal of Salzburg, too. And that's the song, which was originally seven minutes or something. Now it's 8.54, eight minutes and 54 seconds long. Can you believe it? So it's kind of a nine minutes. It's almost nine minutes. Eight minutes and 54 seconds is six seconds shy of nine minutes. You don't really do that for trying to come back with a single, but it's what we do. <laughs> He's a spooksty spookster. Uh, and it's speaking of spooksty spooksters, look at this. Here's another spookster, Tobias Forge. Uh, he says that the next album uh, will be different from Impera. Very hard rocky, very poppy. Uh, we just did a reaction video to Spillways. And you can, you know, if, you, if you're not familiar with a lot of uh, 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 Ghosts music, then that song right there was very poppy, very uh, AOR, very um, stadium rock sounding, you know. That's what he's been going for. He wants to get into the stadiums. He wants to get out of them, them clunky old uh, arenas and into the stadiums. Uh, Ghost Mastermind, Tobias Forge, has confirmed to Consequence that he has already mapped out, and he's very good at mapping out albums, too. He'll put an album out, but he's also got, he's already got the blueprints for the next record. That's so people can't get in there with ideas. They go, I've got an idea for this. I've got it. I'm sorry. I've got it mapped out. I don't, we, we don't need that. Maybe for the album after the album after the album, then we'll try your riff. Thank you. Um... Uh, he told Consequence, already mapped out for the follow-up to this year's Impera LP. I have, uns, I have an album in my head right now that I think is going to be different from the one I just made, he said. Both 2018 Prequel and Impera were ideas that I had since six, seven years back. See, I, what did I tell you about the mapping things out? He's six, seven years ahead in his mind. They were so different from each other in a sense that the plague, the, the plague album, as I call it, was about a little person annihilation on almost more of a, like a carnal, uh, carnal uh, or a God's wrath point of view, whereas the Impera record was more of a structural demise of the uh, mechanics of society. So they felt like two different things, and that idea I have for the next record is also a different thing in my mind, too. It's just a way for me to compartmentalize the ideas of finding new ways to inspire me lyrically and conceptually. He continued, at the end of the uns at the end of today, it's just rock and roll records, 40 minutes of rock music. So it's just a way to make it interesting for me to work with. And then, and a result of that, luckily for a few times now, we've been able to put that together and compile it in a way that has a lot of uh, our fans also finding it interesting to dive into. I think that it was just luck that we just happened to release it in a matter where it seems a little clairvoyant. But these are old subjects. Everything's psych uh, cyclical. I don't think I've ever used the word cyclical. That's the thing. Everything just goes in and sort of alter it uh, a little, draw on or shave off a mustache, shave off a mustache, 
and you have a future asshole. Oh my God, he's talking about me. Who will do something similar to something else a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago. It's always the same. It's very repetitive. Ghost's fifth album, Impera, which sold 70,000 equivalent album units in the U.S. in its first week of release to land at the position number two on the Billboard Hot 200 charts, is marked the third top 10 album and fifth top 40 charting set from the Swedish band. Uh, Impera landed at uh, position number one in Germany and Sweden, number two in the UK, Netherlands, Belgium, and Norway, number three in Australia, number five in France, Ireland, and number 20 in <coughs> Italy. What, it Italy don't like them as much? Asparagucci, spaghetti, Huh? Impera was released on March 11th. The 12-song effort was produced by Klaus Olhund and mixed by Andy Wallace. So there you have that. He's, I wish, is he going to, I I guess he's not going to talk about it. I was hoping that he'd say something like it's going to get heavy again. He's going to kind of work work a little bit more of that kind of metal stuff that he was doing on the first three records uh, before he went. Um, I I have a theory about that, and I think that it's it's the Black Album, um, which interesting interestingly enough, I learned that Metallica didn't name it the Black Album. It's just Metallica. Uh, but the fans called it the Black Album, so it became the Black Album. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I feel like uh, Tobias Forge is, is, is a huge fan of Metallica, and I think that he was doing that, okay, we're going to put out the first, these albums are going to be metal, and I'm going to do that switch to get the bigger audience like Metallica did with uh, the Black Album. Uh, I remember listening to the Black Album for the first time and going, what in the hell is this? It grew on me after a while. But the first time I heard him go, and not, uh, couldn't be much more from the heart. I, I, we laughed. I, I rewound it several times going, what in the hell is going on? But Metallica are smart and they know what, they know how to get uh, brainwash you, you know, go from and justice for all into the black album. And by God, they did it. So there you have that. We'll see what ghosty ghost uh, man does. Tobias Forge. He should be Tobias Ghost Forge, right? Just go by the nickname Ghost. Uh, speaking of another spooky character, look at this. Jesus. That looks like uh, I've been watching Carnival on HBO, and that looks like a guy that would be behind the, a crystal ball of some sort. He's, he's wearing like a black snake jacket, and he's got that little bit of a scowl. Do you recognize this guy without his long, luscious locks? It's Joe Lynn Turner. Uh, and he released Belly of the Beast album. He's going to release the album in October. Hmm. Legendary hard rock singer Joe Lynn Turner, Rainbow, Deep Purple, and Music Theories Recordings mascot, la uh, mascot label group have announced the global release of a new album, Belly of the Beast, on October 28th. Today, they presented the LP's first single, in the form of a lyric video for the title track. I will have to listen to that unless they have a little bit snippet down here. They do have a little snippet down here. We're not reading all this. Um, the wildest times call for the freest of voices. After selling millions of records, playing to countless fans, and fronting some of the most influential rock bands in history, award-winning songwriter and vocal dynamo, Joe Lynn Turner speaks his mind as loudly as possible on his 11th full-length offering and mascot label group debut, Belly of the Beast. Joining forces with producer Peter Tartigren. Um, oh, he's the dude that, uh, yeah, Hypocrisy, great band. Uh, Pain, but he's the dude that does all the music for Till Lindman. Uh, you know him? He's the Rammstein singer. The New Jersey-born powerhouse uh, conjures up uh, the kind of heavy metal that not only makes you throw your fist in the air, but also makes you think. Belly of the Beast is a phrase we've heard over and over again in history, he, he observes. You can trace the cults and corruption all over the world back to prophecies in the Bible. It feels like it's coming to fruition these days. When you look at the book of Revelations, there it is. I've always dipped into esoteric knowledge. Uh, oh my goodness, what's that word? Her hermitism, 
occultism, Bible research, eclectic philosophy, I've been fascinated with discovery of hidden mysteries. Speaking of hidden mysteries, how about them dinosaur tracks that they found with all the uh, uh, um, all these uh, lakes and stuff that are drying up, these droughts? They found uh, a, a, a whole set of a dinosaur prints, 113 million years old. They found them. You can see it like it smashed through mud and then it fossilized. Amazing. Uh, pardon me, where were we at? Uh, we are in true spiritual war right now. It's good versus evil. We've all got an angel on, on one shoulder and a devil on the other. My devil always wins. Uh, he really puts the whipping on the angel guy over on the other shoulder. I mean, he'll walk right across the back of my neck to smack the, the angel guy and say, shut up, he's going to have another beer tonight. Shut up. Um, we're in the belly of the beast, trapped in the system. Ooh. And there's no way out of it. The album addresses this. Well, uh, guys, we're going to give this a little taste, but I'm warning you right now, if they try and ding me for 30 seconds of listening to this, um, we won't. We, you'll be going, oh, he clipped it. Come on. Come on. I want to hear it. Well, that doesn't sound too shabby, does it? We'll have to see what the rest of it sounds like. Uh, again, if, if you're going, well, I didn't hear anything, Shane, you damn dumb son of a bitch. It's because uh, in a 45-minute video, then they wanted to uh, demonetize it for 30 seconds of listening time. So um, guess what, guys? Pantera has announced some of the concerts that they're going to be doing. Uh, Pantera University, Zach uh, uh, Galifianakis here, he calls it... Um, he calls it uh, uh, Pantera University. I did hear the interview with Eddie Junk in the Trunk uh, where Charlie Benante and um, uh, Anthrax were in with him doing the interview. And then uh, Zach uh, Wilde here called in. And um, I like Charlie Benante said uh, uh, he's going to play those beats exactly the way that they were done. He's not going to put his embellishments. He goes, I want, I want to try and be as close to Vinnie Paul as I possibly can be uh, when it comes to that. He also asked Zach over the phone, hey, do you think we can get together to uh, maybe practice a little bit before we kick all this off? And he's like, no, nope, not going to happen. No, we'll get in the room for the big rehearsals with Phil and uh, Rex, but uh, I'm not doing any, I ain't got time to be doing any extra Stuff. So let's see what it says here. Pantera has been confirmed for the Knotfest Colombia, Knotfest Chile, and Knotfest Brazil festivals, all of which will take place in December. Are they going to headline the whole dang thing? Knotfest Colombia is scheduled for Friday, December 9th at Campin Circus, uh, Circuit of Bogota, headlined by Judas Priest and Pantera. And they're just going full on Pantera. They're not going to say Pantera tribute. They're not going to. It's got more sting. If it's just Pantera, this is Pantera. Um, it will be bizarre if they decide, we're going to do an album, everybody. We think we, we can, you know, I don't know if, if Pantera fans will be happy with that. I would love for you to get in the comments and tell me, would you be happy if they put out a Pantera record, but it's Zach and Charlie on there? I don't think that'll happen, but... Uh, first wave of bands announced also featured Bring Me the Horizon, Trivium, Hypocrisy, Sep uh, Sepultura, I want to say Sepultura, uh, Suicidal, S Suicide Silence, and Soul. I don't know who Soul is. Also announced today in the, is the addition of Judas Priest and Pantera to the lineups of both Knotfest Chile, Knotfest Brazil. Uh, these Isn't the, the Knotfest Slipknots thing? Oh, maybe they're going to say this. These legendary acts will join previously announced headliner Slipknot for the first ever edition of the festivals in both locations. Both Knotfest Chile and Knotfest Brazil will also be featuring Bring Me the Horizon, Mr. Bungle, Trivium, Sepultura, Motionless and White, Vendad, that's the sons. Remember we did the father-son video where uh, little Griffin Jr., he got up there on stage? Who's Project 46? Get in the comments and tell me that. 
Last month, it was confirmed that Pantera's surviving members Philip Anselmo Vocals and Rex Brown Bass will unite with Zach Wild, Ozzy, Black Label Society, and, and drummer Charlie Benante Anthrax for a world tour under the Pantera banner. We got... Uh, uh, Okay, so this, the, yeah, here we go. Here's the here's the Benante stuff. Benante told Sirius XM, Trunk Nation with the Eddie and Junk in the trunk, about how he plans to approach the Pantera gig. I can't go do this as the drummer for Anthrax because it would be a different sound completely. So the way I'm going to do that is if you close your eyes, it's going to sound like it's Vinny, basically, and that's how it's going to be. The sound is going to sound exactly like him. Now, did you think I was a liar? Did you think I was lying to you? You were sitting there going, oh, he didn't listen to that podcast with Eddie Junk in the trunk. He didn't do that. Wilde said that he had the similar mindset. You approach it the same way as you do when I'm playing with Ozzy, he said. Obviously, I've got to learn Randy Rhodes stuff. I've got to learn Jakey Lee's stuff. And when I was doing the Black, uh, the Black Sabbath stuff, you learn it and do it as faithful as you can. Charlie's got to learn all of Vinny's parts. You approach it as if you're in a cover band. When you do Zach Sabbath stuff, referring to his Black Sabbath cover band, I don't start changing lyrics midway through War Pigs. You learn the song, so that's what you do. So there you have that, you fine, fantastic freaks. Um, we got one more story here before we get into your comments, and we do have a lot of comments here. Mastodon, if you're interested, I think this is on YouTube, released a 90-minute documentary on making of Hushed and Grim, which is an absolutely fantastic album from beginning to end. Mastodon are one of those bands that are just supreme. And Hushed and Grim is a wonderful record. I listen to it all the time. I love it. Uh, Atlanta progressive meddlers Mastodon have released The Making of Hushed and Grimm, a 90-minute documentary that chronicles the Grammy Award-winning group's critical acclaimed ninth studio album. The film is an intimate look at the band members' creative process, which was largely influenced by the untimely death of their longtime friend and manager, Nick John. They also did a beautiful version of Stairway to Heaven. Uh, if you if you want to check that out, it's on their Spotify and everywhere. The film also uh, intertwines comedic skits that showcase the band's lighter, more humorous dynamic. John, who also managed Gojira, passed away in September 2018 from pancreatic cancer. Hushed and Grim was released in October 2021 via Reprise, the follow-up to the 2017 Emperor of Sand. I like that record. I don't listen to it as much as I do Hushed and Grim. Uh, was recorded at West End Sound, which is located inside of Ember City, a rehearsal facility that members of Mastodon manage in Atlanta. Huh. Helming the effort was Grammy-winning producer, mixer, engineer David Botrill, who had previously worked with Muse, Dream Theater, and Tool. That's a cup. That's that's some bands to have on your on your resume, right? Muse, they're like huge, right? Aren't they? And Dream Theater, they're wonderful. And Tool, they, they own everything. You get close to that little fella that's singing for him, he'll give you a choke out. He does jujitsu. So go ahead and jump on stage with Tool and see what happens to you, because he'll choke you. There's a video. You can look at that on YouTube. Guy climbs on stage to spank his little hiney. And he puts him in a chokehold and, and climbs on top, does like reverse cowgirl on him for, uh, you know, their songs are nine minutes long. So the guy's just laying there, probably taking a nap. That's what I did. I fell asleep legit at a, at a Tool concert. Uh, that's not a slag on him. It's just their, their dreamy musical tones put me into a deep sleep. The Hushed and Grim artwork was crea created by longtime Mastodon collaborator Paul Romano who also designed the sleeves for Crack the Sky, which is a beautiful album cover, Blood Mountain and Leviathan, and more. Um, what's this saying? Uh, Brand Daler's going to say Mastodon drummer Brand Daler stated about the Hushed and Grim cover. Essentially, it's to be brief. The tree is an afterlife mythology that when you pass away, your spirit goes into the heart of the tree and then experiences all the pillars of your, of your in succession of the season that the tree experiences. Huh? 
that is the way you're able to say goodbye to the natural world and move on to the next dimension. You can see a green man in the center of the tree, the heart of the tree, and that is our good friend and manager Nick John, who passed away unfortunately a couple years ago. Yeah, you got to hear their version of Stairway to Heaven. It's pretty, it's pretty spot on. It's pretty good. Uh, it is time for your comments, my friends. So we're going to get right to it because we got a lot to get into, okay? So here's the Dr. Funkenstein. Theme song equals great. I'm getting better at it. Blackie with Elvis bed, LOL. Fantastic quote from Chuck D, Public Enemy. Elvis was a hero to most, but he never meant shit to me. Me either, Chuck. I mean, that's great, yeah. Elvis was a hero to most, but never meant shit to me. <laughs> Isaiah Baltar. It's kind of uh, it kind of rings false that Hetfield has to compare his top, his top of the music heap status with uh, a soldier's PTSD. I mean, the band from the '80s that still played clubs to pay the bills, and there's too many to list. Those guys have pain. Uh, those guys have have pain. They sold millions, played the arena, and now they're playing Big Sal's Pizzeria in Nantucket. That's a step down. That would send me to the bottle. All right, Zayas. Okay, there's your heart. Oop, I forgot Dr. Funkenstein's heart there. Um, uh, Zayas coming in here again. Elvis and the Beatles sold billions of albums because their songs are so generic and non-threatening that most of the gen general population gravitated towards it. Unfortunately, record sales and how much money one has amassed are not necessarily mutually exclusive with good or inspiring music. 100% agree with that. And someone gave you a little thumbsy on that, too. Uh, because, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of bands that don't make any money at all, and uh, they're hardly ever heard of. And that's what we try and do on the first listens and everything else. Find those delicious bands that um, never got to make $100 billion bucks, but they sh probably should have, right? Uh, this is Miss Althea here. The Dumbstruck Fool says the theme song was ser uh, serving 1970 grocery store Muzak realness. Uh, yes, it had that vibe. I'm, tr I, I'm, I'm a Muzak kind of a fella. I like to go to the grocery store and hear. And you're picking up, you know, some frozen peas and a bottle of whiskey and a, you know. Uh, or maybe it was something uh, out of the background of Dean Martin's variety show that the gold diggers would dance to. Is that what they were called, the gold diggers? Jesus, how old do we got to be to remember to know who Dean Martin is? Uh, Blackie Lawless is still Miss Althea. Blackie Lawless and his furniture, come on, y'all. Uh, not one king-size bed joke here, and that's true. We missed the boat on that king size bed. Oh Jesus! I would I would have at least expected something from Mike Buchanan. Uh, still her snap back, clap back, fire back, baby got back. I like jive talking, and I cannot lie. You other subbers can't deny. Andy McCoy could probably thank Nikki Six for just bringing more attention to the very rantings he is trying to sweep under the rug and or debunk. And C plus, uh, C and C Music Factory, things that make you go hmm is still a great fun jam. Yeah, was that the was that the? Um, I remember there being a conspiracy with C and C Music Factory. Was that the song? Oh, it was Everybody Dance Now, where they had the sexy lady in there singing it, but it wasn't uh, a sexy lady that sang the song. So they used someone else's voice and put it on her or something. Didn't they do like MTV stuff with that, with the sexy lady too? Put that in the comments. Uh, Miss Stella Althea, I too was not aware of Eric Gronwell's situation with leukemia. Thank God his treatment was successful, and maybe he continue and may he continue to rock on in good health for years to come. I do remember when Jesus Christ Superstar aired on NBC, and I was curious about it. Okay. Uh, because of Alice Cooper. I do remember hearing about Alice Cooper doing something, but but she failed to watch it. I believe the production won an Emmy, if I remember correctly. I did see the movie a couple of times when I was a kid. That and Godspell were pretty much required in the Midwest, but I honestly don't remember 
much about it. I, I remember, the only reason I know Godspell is I feel like Martin Short and all those people from Canada and Paul Schaefer. I remember hearing something about that's how they got their big break or something. Like Gene, Gene Levy and, and Martin Short and Paul Schaefer and all of them were in a we're in a version of Godspell in the 70s or something like that. I don't know. Put that in the comments below. Uh, Still Miss Althea here. Thin Lizzy was fantastic. I don't believe a word. That's the song. That's a, don't believe a word, you say. Don't believe a word. Yeah, that was good. I was like, God damn it. R.I.P. Phil Lenat. Yeah. What's that? How do you say his name? Lenat? God, he was great. I love, I love that. The boys are back in town. And if the boys are going to fight, you better let them. Oh, she broke down Johnny's face. Man, we just fell about the place. And if the boys would have... Oh, damn. I know every word when I'm singing it, when I'm singing along with it. I'm like that at karaoke, too. I, I pick a song, I get up there to sing it, and I just shit the bed on it. But then as soon as I, I'm just singing it in the car, I, you know... Uh, there's your heart, Miss Althea. White bread. Shane, I want to start a Styx tribute band and need a keyboardist. Are you available? Yes. I I will do that. What was that one song? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, because there was a couple of good ones that uh, had some good keyboard bits in there. I would really have to work pretty hard at it, but yeah, I'm in. I always say I'm in until I get kicked out. That's the best way to join a band. They say, you want to do it? I'm in. And then they kick you out at some point, and then you go, God damn. James Papa Het, my stepsister Tammy, is recently single and ready to mingle. I got you, bro. If he's listening to this podcast, please contact Whitebread uh, for his sister Tammy because she, we all need love. And, man, you'd be living comfortable, right? There's your heart, my friend. Zach Johnson. We just did his band the other day. Slick Wicked. Hands down, best theme yet. L M A A O. Laugh my ass off. That gets a heart and thumb for laugh my ass off. John's life, fantastic episode again as always, and good idea on if they had done it. East Coast versus West Coast with the thrash bands. Random question for you: If you could put on a festival, what six bands would you have on it? Who would headline it? And finally, what would it be called? Well, it's going to be called Diablo Fest. It, it has to be. Or Shane Fest. Um, well, I would want to make a lot of money. So I would have Metallica. I would have Ghost. I would have Iron Maiden. I would have... Uh, 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 maybe I'd put the, the big... F I'd have Overkill on there. I'd have uh, X... Well, yeah. Metallica... Ghost, Iron Maiden, Ozzy Osbourne, I'd, I'd, I'd have him, uh, but it would have to be him saying, okay, this is the first festival he's doing. He hates all other festivals, but he's doing this. I'd probably do Ramstein. Everyone goes cray-cray for Ramstein. They got to be on there. I only know about six of their songs. Do, do Haas, but people go cray. They only play stadiums. And, and they're on tour right now, and they're playing, like, double nights in stadiums and stuff. So, got to have Ramstein on there. Probably probably Merciful Fate or something like that. So, that's a great question, John. I got to think about that a little bit more. Uh, and a thumb for you because you're so creative. Uh, Robin Taylor here. Who would be lucky enough in this world to have such a cool-ass name like Lawless, let alone a first name Blackie? Total stage name. Yeah, I, I figured, you know, no one's going to name their kid Blackie, uh, Blackie Lawless, but uh, he's no Steve Duran or whatever he is, you know. That's a lame name. That's that's a guy that works in accounting. Steve, Steve Duran, do you have the, uh, the, the files on the, the thing? There's your heart, sir. Mike Buchanan. Okay, we're going to save Mike because now he's the, he's the, the, the headliner. He's got his jokes and stuff. Sticky Doll. Blackie Lawless has been eating chocolate cake in that bed for a number of years, apparently. Possibly with Stater Brothers peanut butter cup ice cream. What? That sounds delicious. By the way, we love Blackie and Wasp. Uh, also, our bass player, El Sancho, was at a party 
that Andy McCoy was at many years ago. Ooh, and Andy was sitting in a corner by himself, noodling on an acoustic guitar, all pissed off that nobody was talking to him and giving him a ton of attention. Kind of sad. Yeah, that's and that's what he was looking for too. Is people to come over and so he could strum. Yeah, what? What you want, mate? Oh yeah, mate. And then, you know, if you go over and talk to him, he's just going to bitch about Nikki Six. So you walk off and get yourself another cup of uh, jungle juice, you know. There's the heart for you. Otis Spunkmeyer. Haven't heard from him in a while. He says, Diablo, thumbs up. Well, guess what? Heart and a thumbs up for you, too. And Mike Stelzer, theme song, 10 out of a 10. That gets a heart and a thumb. And someone also gave him another thumb for that. All right, let's get into Mike Buchanan here with his, does he have his jokes? Yes, he's got his jokes. Oh yeah, I'm snapping my fingers, baby. So smooth and relaxing. I mean, I'm getting better with the theme songs. I was uh, I was today years old when I learned Blackie's real name is Steve Duran. Oh, I got it right on the first shot. Oh, it was. I'm gonna put a T there and say it was today years old when I learned Blackie's real name is Steve Duran. Just doesn't have the same pre uh, present presence on stage. And now, ladies and gentlemen. Stephen Duran. Mm. Who? He said, ah, you know, I want to be somebody. Be s uh, this is still Mike Buchanan. So Sebastian Bach in the, in, the, in the day versus Eric today, who wins? I can say that Eric today versus Sebastian today, Eric wins. But only because he's younger and his vocals are still there. I've heard some of the new Heat album. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's just not the same without Eric. Original lead singer Kenny Lecremo, uh, Lecremo is back with the band. Probably has to do with that. Uh, I first discovered Heat when Eric was the lead singer. Crossing my fingers, toes, eyes that Metallica is working on new music. Hope this all happens before they get canceled. Like that's, like that's going to happen. Yeah, what was the beef? There was a beef with Metallica. I missed it, but there was some kind of a beef with him. Uh, and now you're jive talking jokes of the joke of the week for my new lover of bad dad jokes. Uh, bad dad jokes friend faces K. Why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because the chicken was in invent. What? Why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because the chicken wasn't invented yet. Yeah. Why did the crab cross the road? It didn't. It used the sidewalk. Um, boy, these are dad jokes, all right. It didn't. It used the sidewalk. Well, maybe it's got to it's gotta cross sometime. Or you're just going to go around in circles. Sidewalks go around a square block. So you're going to have to get off that. And yes, I'm okay with being moved to the bottom of the reading list. Love you. Oh, there you go. There's a heart. And you got to get the thumb. Uh, that is it, my friends, my friends. Let's get out of here. Let's get on and get up and get out, okay? Let's see. Um, we're going to go crazy with uh, pattern 99. Let's see what... Let's see. Oh. Tone. No. I'm walking on Jeff talking. Whoa. I'm walking on Jeff talking. Whoa. I'm walking on Jeff talking. Oh. And don't I feel good. Jeff.